Well, here's an early three seat. This one's serial number is 200078. I'm going to take the top cover off and see what the rangefinder looks like. As I may or may not have serviced this one, this is my own, but uh, that doesn't mean that I've serviced it, it just means that it's my own. It's not the only 3C I've got, it's probably just sitting there in the cupboard. Let's take that off carefully, yep, okay. Same thing, there's no hole here in the finder to fit that jig or an equivalent because they would have had some equivalent in the factory I would say. Any interesting features with this that I can immediately see? There's one thing here, there's a screw head poking up here. Now the only thing I can think that screw head ever did is support the front lip of this front cover to prevent it pushing inwards. I must service this camera at some stage in the near future I'd say, it uh, probably deserves it. Ok anyway, it's answered our question. The first production of the Retina 3C cameras certainly lacked that hole in the finder. This camera has been serviced possibly on more than one occasion. I've had it for a long time. I don't think I've had cause to do anything to it. I think it's just sat in the cupboard. But these two screws, I've got a bit of a worn look to them. They've been on and off more than once. And I know the uh, exposure meter on this camera had been replaced at some stage. Alright, I'll put the the rewind knob back on. Here's a, something the early Retina 3Cs. Look at that, that's the uh, advanced knob. They had a shiny raised boss in the middle, which was basically just part of the advanced knob. But instead of machining out the whole of this and having a disc of leather, they machined out a ring and had a ring of leather. They stopped doing that fairly promptly. It's a lot of extra work, I would imagine. And um, they're a bit cursed when you come to service them. Getting underneath that leather disc is, is somewhat trickier for some reason or another than getting under the solid disc, the, uh, the whole circle. Right, anything else I can tell you about this while it's here? Oh, he's got some one other quirk. Now, I'll bring this one out. This is the camera I've been working on. You'll see here it's got a T and an arrowhead there. Those are the alignment marks for the auxiliary focus scale for our wide angle and telephoto lenses. So it's got a T and an arrowhead. This is an early camera, this is my early camera here, and you'll see that it has an arrowhead on there, but here instead of the T it has another arrowhead. Now because there's no easy distinction there between the T and the arrowhead. It's just two arrowheads. I'm sure that people mix them up all the time. So that changed very promptly in the manufacturing process. Right, enough of that. We don't need to see that old camera. Let's get back to work. So my range finder is ready to go back on the camera really. I haven't done the final alignment but everything appears to be quite good. So of course I dissolved the lacquer that was holding that lens assembly in at the front. So now 
I've got to lacquer that back in place. I'm just using some lacquer here, which is uh, clear nail varnish. Cheap stuff from the cheap shop. Don't use your wife's nail varnish, she won't like it. If you're paying more than two dollars a jar, you're probably wasting your money. Right, so I'll just put a spot there, top and bottom, and that'll just lock that lens assembly in place so that nothing slides around and causes any grief. So I'll put that on the camera body in a second. I'll give it a minute or two for that lacquer to set up slightly. Put the rangefinder on here and adjust it. Well, time to put this rangefinder on the camera body, I suppose. Normally I'll put a couple of drops of lacquer on here to stop this thing from uh, potentially moving if the camera gets a thump. The rangefinder isn't pinned to the camera housing, nor is it keyed in any way, it's just held down with two screws, so there's a certain amount of potential movement there. A couple of drops of lacquer works well. So I'll put that in place, you've got to make sure that that arm is forward of the stud. If you put it on top of the stud and tighten the range finder up, you'll only end up bending the arm. I'll drop these two screws into place. The first one. The second one. Now usually I hold the rangefinder back hard against the post at the back, which keeps it parallel with the camera body. Tighten those two screws up, check that it moves freely. Now I want to check by looking out the window to see what the image is like. The images don't quite meet at the infinity position, so I'll slacken up this lock screw here. Move that arm slightly forward and look out the window and see what I get. Right, now I've gone a little bit too far. The images meet nicely at infinity but a bit too early. Move that slightly. The adjustments required are very slight. It's easy to overdo it. Don't be surprised if there's an awful lot of toing and froing involved in getting the adjustment correct. The adjustment screw, of course, is an eccentric. And it acts to change the position of the part of the moving arm that follows the pin. From the front ring of the camera relative to the arm on the rangefinder itself. No, it often shifts when you 
tighten your lock screw that can shift your position too so you need to be aware of that and check after you've made an adjustment That looks good. No, it shifted as soon as I tightened it down. I'll get this right and I'll come back. Right, I appear to have that correctly positioned. Now, yeah. the exposure meter. Alright, that appears to work well. There's no uh, guarantee of accuracy, not with a uh, selenium celled meter as old as this. But at least it swings, it reacts to light and it swings freely. And that's good. The film release button, I'll just Put some molybdenum paste up through the hole in that. Fit its return spring, put that in place. Take this screw out here that I temporarily in that plate. Fit the exposure meter in place. Put the screw back in place. This is always awkward because there's a uh, magnet in the meter of course and it's making the screw jump all around and do anything but stay where I put it. That's better. The second screw goes here. Well, keep checking that film release button, it has a habit of jamming against the, uh, the meter. While you're trying to get those screws down tight. Once the top cover's in place there won't be a problem with that. Let's give that glass one last wipe. Where's the shutter release button? There it is. Put that in place. Now one last look. Make sure there are no fingerprints on any of the windows of the rangefinder and so forth. That all appears good. And here's the top cover, which I've cleaned since I last spoke to you while I was listening to something on the computer, so I couldn't be doing that in recording it at the same time. Let's get this in position. Now those strap plug, the holes there at the strap plug end appear to be well off. That looks to be good. I think the strap plug's actually bent. Usually that means the camera's been dropped at some stage. Yeah, that's pretty lousy alignment here. See if I can get that better.
There's not much to see there, but that must be off slightly. Yeah, that's not going to go. That's better. That top cover clipped down in position, it all appears to be. Usually there's no problem with getting any uh, good alignment at the strap plug end, at that end. Normally when you sit, fit the strap plug and you do up the screws, you make sure that the strap plug is pressed pushed outwards as far as it'll go against the screw heads and typically that is exactly the right place it needs to be. In this case the strap lug had been bent inwards. Okay. Yeah, my shutter release button is jammed there, it must be. Not aligned properly. That's better. Yeah, my shutter release is certainly not lining up very well there, and that's jamming. It may mean that the shutter release shaft is slightly bent, or it may mean the top cover is slightly out of shape. Seems to move freely enough in the body. Let's try moving the meter back as far as I can get it. And it's definitely sticky. Sometimes the shutter release shaft itself can be a bit bent. And that causes you problems. Often you'll find that it's been bent in one particular direction, pushed forward or pushed back in order to move smoothly. And if you accidentally put it back in the camera the other way around, things won't move smoothly. Of course it's supposed to be straight. Because if it's straight it wouldn't matter which direction you'd had the thing oriented, it would automatically work. Right, it's most important that the shutter release button and the film release button move smoothly and freely. Right, I need to check my frame counter to make sure that it moves smoothly and that the 
little tick marks, the numbers come up exactly in the middle of that notch. Let's see what we get. Yeah, the numbers are well off. It's moving nicely one frame at a time, but it's not moving directly to center those numbers up. So I'll make an adjustment. I want it to throw a little bit further each time, so I'm just going to back this screw out and turn. Get that top seated. Check to see what I've got. Now we're throwing too far. So I can turn that screw in. Probably went the wrong way. Let's send it up. And it only moves one position each throw, which is ideal. You can, if you get the adjustment wrong, you can get that counter counting two frames with each swing of the advance lever, which of course means that it thinks it's got to the end of the film in half the time and locks your film advance. Your frame counter will say you're back at number one that you've used all your film. The film advance will be locked, but in practice you'll have only got probably 18 shots. Shutter release, film release button, frame counter. That's moving nicely. Okay, that's good. I'm not going to put the rewind on at this stage. I'll wait until I've got my shutter back in here. I need to make the final adjustment for the shutter release to make sure that the shutter release and the film advance release happen at the same point in the travel of the shutter release button. In order to do that, I'll need to have the shutter serviced and back in the camera.